Uh, there are quite a quite number of questions uh, people are asking about how to use this telescope to take uh, deep space objects, planets. So I wanted to go a bit more detail into that one. And also I'll show you guys how to use the Celestron 14 to capture Jupiter and uh, the planetary animation, like, you know, along with the moons. So this is live view from Celestron Astromaster 130. Yeah, you can use a small planetary camera. I'm using the CWO ASA 290MC. I tried using the CWO 120MC as well. I think they both will do pretty good job. 120MC is a lot cheaper than 290. So I recommend 120MC to use. So this is a live view software, a SharpCap Pro. So the mount I'm using is actually iOptron SkyGuider. Even though I changed the mount, selecting Jupiter and keeping the planet in the center, the mount is tracking excellent, but centering the planet manually at that focal length was actually a bit challenging for me. And uh, finally, I was able to actually look at the planet and make sure the planet looks okay. I tried to uh, focus it on the planet, which I'm not supposed to do, but I got no choice other than focusing the planet. I actually changed the capture space from mono to RGB 24. It's not recommended to use RGB24, but I preferred using that one. And 640 by 480. And I did a capture of two minutes. I didn't want to go, actually I put four, but I stopped at two minutes. So two minutes is more than enough for this capture. So here is the processed image. This is the Jupiter image captured using Celestron Astromaster 130. Not too bad for a hundred dollar telescope, but Mount is the one that is giving me tough time. I'm thinking to actually change the slow motion controls on the Celestron Astromaster 130 Mount. And I'll show you guys how to use the slow motion control mount as well in the later videos. I also took pictures using Celestron 14 and I processed those images as well. It came with the moons uh, along with the Jupiter. So once you got all your files in the folder, you'll have, depends on how you are taking it. If you take like 15, 20 seconds long, you will have smaller files. And also based on the resolution, your files will be much smaller. So let's take the very first file. I mean, depends on how you process the time. So right now, like look at the sizes of the files. Make sure like you start off with something that is even. So each one of my files are two minutes long and they are in the 640 by 480 resolution. So they are like 13 gigabytes. Okay. So I'm taking the first file as like 931 and I open the file and uh, don't worry about this one yet. When you open the file, select planet. Uh, dynamic background, noise robust 4. So don't ask me how I got these. It's a collection of internet uh, data. So I'm not pretty good at uh, planetary processing. So I'm using the best that I have seen so far. 
auto size quality based i put 50% a uh, tiff file format i didn't select these two some people select these two but i selected rgb align it gives you a pretty good uh, color alignment save in the folder is equal to yes i'm not using the drizzle sometimes like if you want more quality data maybe you can try that uh, but uh, sometimes it gives you like extra artifacts as well uh, so i would not try that one these are the choices that i'm using you could actually go analyze and move stuff around but i would just at this moment because i already set up like this one like stack but on the right side if you clear this one out this is what it is so what you do is try to look at your frame by moving these frames go pretty slow and see where you are seeing more details like like i start right here because i'm seeing a little moon here and i'm seeing some data like you can move um if you pay attention to this data and if you move slowly i think it would be a little tedious in the beginning but if you move very slowly and nice you would know like which frame is better like this one is the best i would select 24 i don't select manual draw i place an ap grid it gives you the nice grid but once you do get this grid i think it should be fine scaling is fit auto visualization is details and draw ap's the alignment points automatically right image size 640 by 480 i didn't want to change i don't want to zoom this is already 100% zoomed in i left it as it is so this is it i don't want to export the frames because too many frames uh, 16 bit i left it as it is so that's pretty much what i'm doing uh, probably i may not be using all the choices so once if i click on stack it will do its job anywhere between like 2 minutes to 3 minutes depends on your computer speed it is going to take some time i'll i'm going to pause the video here once it is done i'll show you guys back the video here so now the processing is done and you can see you can see in the files that it created like a new ap50 directory let me change into details so you should see that it did created a new file just now okay so this is the file that it created okay this is how the file is going to look like okay so this is the file that was created by auto stacker okay so what we have to do is we have to process this file and make it better a little bit okay so there is another tool called registax which you could actually um, use it and select the file which is uh, let me show you the file this is the one that we opened up so now you are looking at registax and here is the file right so let me um, bring that up into the presentation okay so now um if you see this one i selected it and you are in this uh, mo you are in this wavelet align stack and wavelet you are in the wavelet tab see this registax also can do the same thing what auto stacker can do but i believe people are now using auto stacker for aligning and stacking and people are coming to the registax for wavelets only okay so i'm using that way so these are the wavelet settings here but i 
created a small, uh, I saved the wavelet setting into a small file. And if I select that, it automatically changes the picture. Did you see that? So, these are the settings. You can actually copy these settings. I moved everything to 100. These are the settings I'm using. So, basically the bottom wavelet layers, I made some changes to it from the defaults. And uh, I don't do anything else besides that one. It gives me fairly good, even if you go into the view zoomed, and if you press the control button, you can see it gives a pretty good view when you use the settings that I have here. You don't need to do RGB align anymore. But one thing that I would do is I'll go into flip and rotate. And I wanted to make this into even. So I played with these numbers before. So I'm using 22.5 as the number. And that's the number that you need to remember that you have to do it for each and every file the same number. I like this one. I don't want exactly to the uh, horizontal, like, you know, exactly this, like, you know, the way it is. I wanted this one to go up a little. It shows small angle to it. I know it's not technically correct, but uh, you, you don't want to make it uh, like as the planet in, on your face. It's better to keep it a little angle so that it looks more natural. It gives everything that we need. And then there is a thing here called save image. You have not used the do all function. Perform this now. Say yes. And if you say that yes, I usually select this as underscore v2 in the same directory. Anyway, so this is it. So you have to do the same process for each one of them. What I mean is, I will open the file. We just completed the 931 file, right? The 53, that's what we just completed. So I'm going to this file. You can select them all and do like select all and you can do multiple files same time. It doesn't matter. You don't need to select one after the other. I'll show you what I mean. If you select, let us say, all these files, I took uh, two minutes exposures, right? And I took up to this one. Let's say I completed the last one, I believe, already. So up to here, or it doesn't matter. I can select up to here. It doesn't, that's fine. Say open. It takes like probably like a minute, but it does open. If you notice, on this one, it says 1 of 27, okay? So, this will take quite a bit of time for you to complete all these files, okay? So, if you have patience to wait to complete all these files, it pretty much completes everything. Uh, typically, each file will take like 10 minutes or so. So, this will take probably... Uh, 300 minutes. It takes like four to five hours to complete this process. That's what generally it takes. Like if you have these many files, three to four hours or four hours or something, right? So the good thing of doing this is it actually uses the same alignment. You don't need to do anything. Number two, it picks generally the good frame. You don't need to go into each and every file and pick the right frame. You don't need to. It does it automatically. I think that is one good thing. And all you have to do is like stack it. When you are done stacking it, if you go to this directory, uh, in this directory, it is going to place every file that you need to uh, process it. And these files, you are going to open them one by one in Registax and then follow the same settings. Right, so I'll uh, stop recording because I'm going to stack it for the next four, four or five hours, I guess.
So finally, all the files came through and I pretty much did the same thing because the settings are saved. I just applied the settings file after file and save the image and change the angle of rotation to like the saved number like 22.5 in this case. It doesn't matter like depends on what you want but you got to do the same number on each file. Yeah, I kept going and uh, got the rotation in the Jupiter which I'm going to share with you all. If you are new to this channel, I do processing tutorials, capturing asteroids, comets and other deep space objects. So if you are interested in these videos, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll show you the images that I captured. Thanks for watching.